going on, guys? Matt White here with Jimmy Mentis, another episode of Fit Business. Thank you all for joining us. What's going on, Jimmy? Hey, Bolo. How are you, man? Living the another dream. day, another dollar. <laughs> <laughs> All right, man. So, what do you want to talk about today? We um, we talked a little bit about pricing. Let's talk about obviously map, pri map pricing and and everybody we chase down to uh, to not destroy our brand. Yeah. So, I mean, obviously, there are different pricing structures. You have map pricing, where people are, you know, kind of limiting. The, the pricing structure of what retailers can sell right. at. Um, you know, we have different things from promotions and sales going on at retail, as well as brands themselves who sell direct to consumer. Right. Um, First of all, tell our, tell our viewers, what is map pricing? Map pricing is, is basically where a manufacturer goes to the retailer and they say, Hey, look, you know, I'm going to sell the product to you at, you know, whatever price it is, but you cannot sell it for lower than whatever the said price is. Minimum, so, minimum advertised price. Correct. So they could sell it. They just can't advertise it. I got see there's a loophole there. Yeah, but a lot of people get get their fingers smashed for for doing that. I, I know when I was with Metrex, uh -huh. we didn't have a map policy, but we also policed retailers. So let's say we were selling a pre-workout for, I don't know, let's say 30 bucks. And that was the price that, that we went out and said, look, we don't want you to sell below that price. If they were selling it for $29, we would go to them and say, look, you can't, you can't do that, or we're just going to stop selling it to you. Okay. Um, but yes, I, I guess technically you're correct that, you know, it's the advertised, you can't, you know, price it lower than, um, but I mean, I see a lot of people saying, you know, look, we don't want you to sell it lower than this price regardless. Do, do you see that a lot? Do you see people you abiding you, by? You, you can't police that. You can't police. It's difficult. You, yeah. You can't police what the retailer is going to sell it at or a website what's going to sell it at you can't um and, and there's there's a there's multiple reasons why <laughs> number one is minimum advertised price so if i if i had a, a retail store and i sold a the metrics pre-workout for 39.99 and you guys had set me as a map price of 39.99 I would advertise the $39.99. As soon as someone came in, I'd say, listen, you can get yours for $32.99 today. You can't police that. You will never be able to police that. So it's the advertised price. So in other words, what's out in the world? And that's back then before social media. Now with social media, okay, you post something or somebody sells something, it's on a website, it's all over the place. So that's even more. But on the flip side, metrics goes in or any metrics goes in and says hey you know what you're selling you're selling for 32.99 we're not going to sell it to you anymore you know what they say now i'll just find somebody else oh absolutely so there's there's no way this whole map pricing especially with amazon and websites and this and that that actually takes effect unless you don't give them the margins well, here's a funny story, and I only know this because I'm friends with different sales reps from brands um, that I work with. You know, they're they're my clients, and I'm not going to name the name, nor am I going to name the retailer. Uh, but both are extremely large, both on the retail side and the supplement side. And the retailer opened up an Amazon account, but didn't have it as the retail name. Right. So which, let's say, you know, let's say ABC uh, supplement store. Right. And it's just, I made it up. Um, they didn't use ABC supplement store on Amazon. So this rep sees their products dirt cheap on Amazon. And he contacts Amazon and says, you know, who, who is this seller? We're trying to figure this out. The pricing's not right. We can't have them, you know, selling it at this. So it comes back that they find out who, this retailer is, and it's a very large retailer that everyone knows. And uh, 
and this rep contacted them and said, look, we're going to, we're going to pull it out from you. If, if you don't abide by our pricing. And yeah, I mean, obviously this, it could be a, a, a one-off type of thing. Obviously it's not the norm where people are really going to go out and police, but I mean, the supplement company is really big. So this retailer is not going to piss them off right. and be like, okay, cool. We're just going to drop your line. They're not going to do that. Cause people are walking in the door asking or looking for their products every day. Right. Um, but I agree. It's going to be damn near impossible to, to look at every website, go to every store, um, and, and police that it's going to be very difficult. It's kind how of do, like the how, honor system. How do companies nowadays have all this distribution? I like to know, right? How do they have all this distribution? Let's just say U S right. U S distribution. They're in multiple websites. They're in multiple retail stores, multiple chains. And then they go on their own website and say, buy two, get one free, buy one, get two free, uh, get this, get this, get this. Like, like, at what point does that the does the retailer or the the people who are distributing your product or your brand turn around and say, "Hey, we got a little problem with that." Cuz I got to tell you, in the beginning with Beauty Fit, I did that as well. Like what I did and and I didn't think of it until they actually sat me down. It was my mistake and I and I apologize for it was even though I was in full retail in the United States, and Europa, GNC, you know, all that kind of stuff. I was blowing out Beauty Bum, hardly making any money at $19.99. Because my my thing behind it was I want them to come and get it and then go there to buy it. And they they sat me down. They're like, listen, not, this is not going to work. You know, you can't be doing this. You can't be doing that. So, you know, obviously I got my act together and, and we found the happy medium. Where where does where does that go? I mean, you, it, it, the map pricing also has to stay on the, on the on the company side too, on the brand side. They have to stick to to their thing. Where do where, how do people work that out? What what have you seen in in terms of the the sales that people are doing? The sales that people are doing the the brand itself uh -huh. selling product at what price and what specials do they do? Right, the B to C, the direct to consumer, right, and then right. from the B to B, and then the retailer selling it. At what point are they always on the same? Because I know some brands are doing crazy deals that that the retailers definitely don't have those margins. Yeah, I mean, here's here's the funny thing, and I don't know if it's people are trying to be deceptive. Um, on purpose, but I mean, if you inflate your pricing, look, everybody wants to make good margins, but if you're selling a product and, you know, let's just say sticker price of what people are going to be buying, whether it's online or, or on the shelf is 50 bucks, but all of a sudden people are selling it for 20 bucks. It, it really makes the consumer look at it as, okay, so I would walk in there any day of the week and buy, you know, pay fifty dollars for for buying whatever pre workout or whatever the product is. But I for twenty dollars, how much is that retailer actually making? And I, I mean, the deals that the supplement companies give the retailers really depends on how deep the retailers are going to go with with their own discounts. So you do have the fluctuations, you know. Day to day, week to week, month to month. Of, hey, uh, this month, supplement company X is doing an extra five points off right. orders larger than a thousand dollars or whatever. So people are going to buy into that retailers, and they're going to take the extra five points, and either they can pocket that money, right. or they can do some wheels and deals. Hey, if you buy this product, we're going to throw this product in because right. you know it's the total blended margins at the end of the day of what the retailer is looking for. That's why um, I know uh, uh, Josh Shaw was talking about this, the the one dollar drinks at, at GNC, and I didn't. Which I didn't was watch, a which was a great post. I, and I, I didn't watch the the video yet, um, but my perspective of, of what they're trying to do is to get people in the door, and then obviously you're trying to upsell them, not necessarily using it as a loss leader because people are probably going to come in to buy the product anyways. 
But, you know, at the end of the day, they're doing it because they know that they're going to be able to blend margins and, right. and at least make something off of a, a transaction. So, I mean, from the retail side, it, it can really vary um, with what they're going to do. But to me, from a consumer side, I find it confusing when I see brands that are being sold for super low on sales, on discounts. I know brands like bodybuilding.com have changed their their sales structure. Um, you know, back when I was with Metrics, they were saying, hey, look, we're not going to do anything more than 25% off on pre-workouts, BCAAs, and protein. Because those are kind of like the big three that everyone's right. going to be buying. Right. And if you lower those, I mean, the, the margins of protein as as is today are, are very, lo very low in general. So, you know, they don't want to be technically – technically almost losing money doing these sales for for some of these items. Um, but, I mean, what what's your thought on the whole pricing structure from the manufacturer to the retailer to the consumer? Is Should everyone be in a line like, hey, if we're doing this promotion where we're going to give you an extra five points, we want you to do an extra five off of the products to help you know move volume – do you think that it should be at the discretion of the retailers? And, and how does that look in the eyes of – this is a multi-layered thing I'm, I'm giving you. Um, and how does it look in the eyes of the consumer? Yeah. Do, they, do they frown upon and say, well, if I can get it cheaper today on sale, why can't you give me that price every day? Yeah. Well, to me, that's um, – I, I got mixed feelings <clears throat> for all those layers that you have that you're throwing at me. Um there, the brands, the brands nowadays, nowadays, their overhead is is huge. It's just the overhead's just a lot, right? So, but but I don't understand how they can't keep a consistency of pricing. They can't. Um, I, you know, like what Josh put about the uh, Ali knew the uh, the drink one dollar, right? The one dollar drink. The drink doesn't cost that more than twenty seven thirty cents. Period. Right. But the overhead, you know, you put all that in there, the shipping, blah, 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 blah. They might be breaking even or maybe losing 10 cents. Yeah. But what I, do, what I don't like, what I don't like and I see, and I kind of feel bad for the other brands, but you know what? These brands buy so much inventory, okay? They buy so much inventory and they basically say, okay, for the next six months or for the next year, this is all the inventory we're going to have and we need to sell it. So... If if that inventory cost them, let's say a million dollars, they try to they try to recoup that million dollars right away, and the rest is just profit. Okay, mm -hmm. so they try to get rid of it. I'm gonna name I'm gonna name a, a product here because you know I, I don't think I, th I don't think Aaron's gonna be upset with this, but I saw I saw through my social media, Cardillo, um, Cardillo the the store the A N C A N C yeah. Nutrition. Yep. He, he was giving. A, did you see it? I. He was, I, I I don't know. I'm not sure what you're talking about. He was um, uh, one of the guys up there. I forgot his name. Was they're promoting the wrist wraps, the wraps, the straps. Okay. And they said if you come in and you purchase these lifting straps, the Cardillo or whatever they were, ANC, or it was some brand, right? It was one of their own brands. You get a total war for free. Hmm. Now the message I got was they're overstocked. They can't sell it. That's just the message I got. Yeah. That A and C has got so much total war, they can't sell it. Why would you be giving away a total war totally for free? When when someone 10 miles from you or five miles from you or somebody with a click of a button is paying, I don't know, 30 bucks, 40 bucks? You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I'm not saying the marketing is wrong. I'm just saying it's it's a there's a lot of confusion. And when a brand has a lot of confusion from the consumer, they start not trusting it. Who was always who was always always on top of their game? Always. Metrex, Labrada, and um Yes. And, yes, and Bill. Yeah. You never saw those crazy sales. Right? Right. 
They were very well respected, still respected. We still talk about Bill and EAS. We still talk about Metrex back in the days, right? So, so that's where that that's where I see that there's a, there's a confusion. They're, they're starting to confuse the consumer, and that's why the the brands are more geared towards men, right? The, the, the brands that are geared towards men, that's why there's no loyalty. There's no loyalty from the consumer towards the brand because once a new pre-workout comes out, they're going to go try it. They, they, they hop on it and they're on to the next. So if they built that, that foundation that, again, I'm going back to that warm and fuzzy feeling with the consumer – and not throw throw around all these different sales and all these opportunities. They're great. The sales are great, but what's that message? What's that message? See, my my retail my retail distribution here in the states is very limited now. I, I I'm not I'm I'm not playing that game anymore. Plus, my retail has gone into into a different channel, right? I've gone into the beauties. I've gone to, you know, the Nordstrom's, the Ulta's, the Sephora's, right? So it's, it's yep. a little different, right? But I'm not doing those crazy sales. If I do a crazy sale on the website, it's be, it's one or two days just to get the consumer to purchase it, which some of those products aren't anywhere else, right? So again, as you can see, I have mixed feelings. Love the sales, but what's the message behind behind the sale? So let me ask you this. Now oh, you're full of questions. I got tons of questions. Apple. Apple products. You go to Best yeah, Buy, that's, you go to, you that's go to just Walmart. Ridiculous. It's it's I'm not talking about pricing. I'm talking I mean from from you know the the scale of of what the pricing would be from low end to high end. What I'm saying is, if you want a uh, shit, I don't know, fill in the blank, a MacBook, you're going to pay the same price whether you go to Walmart. I love it. Amazon, Best yes. Buy, yes, whatever. So, does that structure make more sense than having every retailer? Cross yes, potentially have a different price. No, I like that Apple thing, but but here's what's going here's what's going on with Apple. The new the new eleven came out, right? If I got a service with Verizon, I saw, I saw the commercial this morning. If I got a service with Verizon, I get a free Apple uh, an Apple eleven, an iPhone eleven, hmm. right? Uh huh. Yeah. It's like seven hundred dollars off, but but that makes that oh the eleven has to be more than than seven hundred. Well, I mean, just, you figure the X or the ten or whatever the hell they called it was like over a thousand. Yeah, hello. Um, but again, they say trade in any any your old iPhone, no matter what condition it is, get service and you get the new eleven for free. So when they when I like what Apple does. I mean, you can't get an iPhone anything less unless they go to the Verizon, AT&T, whatever, and they do a deal with them for the service. And and probably AT&T has bought hundreds of thousands of iPhones, correct? So that's where the distribution side on the on the wholesale side these these phones could go out. So the the question I guess that that I would have from the consumer side of things is if I can sign up with Verizon and get a one thousand plus dollar phone for free, how much is that phone really worth? How much did it, did it actually cost to create? But that's none of your business. No, I know. But from a consumer standpoint, I'm going well. Heck, I'm getting you know bent over royally. You know, you didn't even take me out to dinner if if you're willing to give it to me for free. No, no, no. the consumer is basically saying instead of buying the 512 gig or whatever for fifteen hundred dollars, I can go to Verizon and get it for free with service. Consumer, the consumer should never turn around and say, "Well, that pre workout they only made they only it only cost them say eleven dollars. I'm not going to pay forty nine ninety nine for it, right?" Now, if they turn around and they see that formula 
Okay, here's the thing. If they turn around and see that formula and they know what they're looking for and they see that formula now with those old transparent, you know, um, formulations and they see that formula didn't cost them more than $5 and they're charging them $39.99, yeah, that might be a problem. And and that's, okay. that's what I mean. But no I mean, consumers, consumers are smart these days. They're, I mean, not, not smart to the point where they know what, what costs are, but you know they're looking at ingredients. They know you know from the supplement side of things what's in the you know a cheap you know ingredient. What's m more along the lines of an expensive ingredient? Yeah, and no, I don't. Th I, I don't think so. I'm not saying they're not smart. You know? I don't think they're looking at that because you can go to Walmart and get a pre workout and be 500 migs of, of caffeine and say it's a it's a it's an amazing pre workout because they went boohoo crazy. You know, when they were doing their leg workout or when they were doing cardio. See, that defines the pre-workout. That defines, you know, the the cost. See, it's it's how people feel. It's how, what 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 did they get out of that that product? See, I won't get the new. Well, I say that now, right? But <laughs> <laughs> you'll have it tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> the only reason why I might get the new phone. Is because now the camera's upgraded, right? It's got a new camera, and I do all this shit on my on my phone and stuff like that for social media. Right. So in my crazy head, I'm justifying it because as a camera, not because it's bigger and better on the inside, you know. But if it didn't have a different camera, why would I go? So we're always trying to justify why I need to get that, why we need to get this product, why we need to buy these new Nike shoes. All of a sudden, when the new Jordans came out, these that I'm wearing right now are squeaking. So let's, All of a let's, sudden. Talk, let's talk about that. Do you feel that pricing in general is out of control? And, and I say this because I remember years ago, you could buy any pair of shoes. It didn't matter what it was for 100 bucks. You could buy Jordans. You could buy whatever, 100 bucks. Now you got... Six hundred dollar Yeezys. You got these ridiculous. What are the Balenciaga? You're spending like a thousand plus bucks for some designer name shoes. Do you think pricing structures are completely way blown out of proportion these days? If the consumer is willing to pay for it, the market decides. I get it. That's it. I get it. I, you, I just you can't fight that. It's it's just difficult when you look at things where you have one shoe. And you compare it to another shoe, same type of shoe, same, you know, similar type of technology with the soles, yeah. one selling for 200, one selling for 90 bucks. And you're going, right. and I get it. You're, you're paying for, yeah. I mean, look at, look at the, uh, the Under Armour stuff. You're going to be paying more money for the rock branded apparel. I, I get that. And I guess, right. you know, what I'm saying is when, when the consumer is going to decide, the market decides when, what the, if it's worth the value. <laughs> When you get in your 50s, things change, man. If you see my watch collection, you would punch me in the mouth. Okay? That's what I'm wearing every day. <laughs> okay, we went out the other night with Tam Tam. I went to go put on a watch. Got to the garage door. I said, hold on. Went back. Put my eye watch, my my eye watch back on. She goes, "What happened?" I said, "Nothing." And then she looked at me as we're having dinner. She goes, "You change your watch?" I'm like, "Yeah." She goes, "Why?" I'm like, "I don't know." You know, things change. You it it, it changes. So as long as the consumer are willing to pay for that, you know, like the cars. I mean, I have cars. Right, right. I got a truck now. Yeah, freaking love it. Well, you're let's 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 be let's be transparent here. Your truck ain't the cheapest truck, <laughs> Raptor. I mean, Co shit, you ain't driving around like an old Ford, you know, F one fifty beat up, rusted out. Listen, compared to, compared compared to the cars I had, right? True. Yes. So Agreed. so so what I'm saying is is that I think I think my my um. Uh, was it my mother or was it Tammy? Somebody says when when you are able to buy something, 
it's not really a challenge anymore. Yeah. Okay. So maybe that's part of me too, but I don't see it. I, I'm not that. I'm not that that guy anymore. And I don't even know if I ever was that guy. I just thought I. It felt good, and I realized it didn't do anything. So when I go, when I used to go buy the Jordans, you know, when I even had the Nike contract, I would even go buy shoes because I couldn't wait for them to send them to me because I had to wear them before everybody else. Right now, you know, it's it things change. A person changes. So as long as as long as the consumer is willing to pay for a product, right? Any product, sneakers, pre-workout, right? Would you, now, pre-workouts, would you buy the same pre-workout you bought at 25 now? No. You're looking at it now different. You're studying it different, right? Yeah. So same with supplements. It's the same thing. The 25-year-old is going to probably buy the cracked out one that is for 40, 50 bucks, thinking that's the best one. Give him yeah. 10 years. Give him 10 years, and he'll be like, nah, that's that's really not worth it. Uh, I'm going oh, in a absolutely. different direction. Yeah, you see what I'm saying? So, you know, like when as we grow older, as we mature, and we have more experience in life, we tend to see things a little different. And some brands go after the young. Some brands go after the older. Some brands go after, you know, my age. And they come to you at a different a, a different angle. And that's right. where it's at. You know, you're not going to see me buy $150 shoes anymore. You know, I won't do it. Yeah. So, so where, where, are you, where are you at on that? I'm I'm very conscious of pricing. If if I see prices going up, I I want to know the justification behind it. If you don't want to tell me, that's fine. But like we said with with you know supplements earlier, I'll go shop for something else. So you know for me, pricing is very if if the value if I feel that the value of it is worth the price i'll pay whatever right but it's kind of like to each his or her own of where they put their value on things you know are they putting their value on materialistic things so they're willing to pay more for for the aesthetic i guess you know appearance type right. uh products are they looking more for function i mean obviously like going back to your your pre-workouts i mean i was the guy who you know i was testing out the metrex products taking in damn near close to a gram of caffeine on things just to see what would happen for the heck of it now i'm looking at it as yeah, <laughs> yeah i might not make it if i try right. that i'm going more from <laughs> don't, don't get me wrong i like my caffeine i like my caffeine in the morning i like it you know early afternoon but then when it's workout time after work, I'm going for the pump. I don't need the right. caffeine. I don't need that, you know, raging energy. When right. I get in the gym, I get that anyways just because I'm excited to be there and, and take out my stress. But, I mean, from a pricing standpoint, I think I think we all need to look at the, the value of, of what it is. And obviously, supplement manufacturers and retailers are going to have a different point of view on this because there's margins involved and yes they had to pay to get you know the raw materials for the manufacturer and the retailer had to pay to get that product to get the inventory but at the end of the day if it sits on shelf who's who's really winning right so but then it, then it boils but it, at the bottom line that we like it or not the consumer drives the market if the consumer's paying 70 bucks for a pre-workout right then then everybody's going to be charging 70 bucks for a pre-workout. I mean, think about it. I mean, now now pre-workouts are what no more than 40 bucks. Back then they were 55, 60 bucks. Yeah. Right? So So let's let's end this out on do you think that the current pricing structures are going to continue where retailers and manufacturers are going to have various sales Anywhere from low end being an additional five, you know, percent off for an upsell, 
or upwards of 50 plus percent on certain items, you know, uh, 4th of July sales, New Year sale, you know, Christmas sale, Thanksgiving, mm -hmm. Black Friday, mm -hmm. Cyber Monday. Do you see that structure continuing or do you see more more brands are, are you, going are out you, of this is stupid? We're just going to have an everyday low price and it is what it is. Are you talking about our industry, supplement industry? Yeah, let's let's pick one. OK, Most people let's, that, let's, that are talk, watching let's talk about supplement industry real fast. Um, here's what I predict. I predict. Private labeling, undercutting, uh, undercutting the anchor accounts, mm -hmm. using Agreed. them as bait, and flipping them. And yeah. sooner or later, the anchor accounts will be following their prices. I see it. I see because it. because they'll realize that that pre workout, there's room in there. And why are they going to pay that money when they can make it less than what they're buying it for and make more money and have their own brand? Yeah, I agree. So with that being said, guys, we want your feedback. What What do you think about pricing today? Are, are you on the stance of you agree with what brands like Apple are doing where it doesn't matter where you go, you're going to pay the same price? So it makes it very simple for you to – just shop whatever you feel most comfortable with. If Amazon is who you go through, you're going to pay that price. If you go to Best Buy because it's down the street, you're going to pay the same price. Do you like that type of structure? Or do you kind of get baited in by sales and promotions? Hey, you know, buy one of these. We're going to give you 30 off. If today only 50% off this, this product, you know, or do you like that? Um, let us know because I think it's interesting because – it goes back to what we just said, personal value. Like where – what do you put your value on? Is it easier for you to to buy just an everyday low price or you know, are you the sales shopper where you're going to not buy something until you see it on sale? So with that being said, drop us a link and a comment. Uh, you know, what, do you, what do you think? Uh, what products do you shop for? Maybe you're buying supplements from here but – Close, you're totally different on the pricing structure. I think, you know, we can go that way too and break it down into right. different segments, you know, because I know personally I'll shop differently for certain items. But again, it comes back to what I put the most value on. So that being said, let us know Fit Business Official over on Facebook. If you like this, feel free to give us a like, comment, uh, subscribe. It just helps us in the algorithm, lets people know that you guys are finding value from the content that we're putting out. So with that being said, I got nothing left. Jimmy. I'll see you later, buddy. Peace.